What's going on, people? It's Alexander, obviously. Today is Thursday, not Friday. <coughs> yeah, that was a mistake on my part. So, that was the workout. Workout was excellent. The workout was excellent. I've trained back like three times this week, so it was really, fairly low volume. Um, did eight sets a row. Yeah, it was, it was a low volume workout. It's only about 12 working sets. Um, you know, in and out, did some fasted cardio. So, anyways. Anyways, well, let's just get to talking. So, how much money to be happy? So, why am I talking about this? So, my buddy Nate, who's killing the game, so he's talking about how he's aiming to make $100,000 a month. But the problem with this goal for him, the problem with this benchmark, is he doesn't really have any incentive to do it because his life is already very comfortable. He has all the money he needs. And I'm, you know, perhaps some of you are shaking your heads and, oh, that's a great fucking problem to have, motherfucker. No, I'm making a point that when you reach a certain threshold of financial prosperity, you don't need more money. You actually don't need more money. Uh, and I'm not saying this because I'm a fucking rich guy. This this is my story. It took me until 29 to basically be financially prosperous. But I'm telling this from the perspective of having worked with very, very wealthy clients many times over the years. When you hit a certain threshold of income, and the, the number that's usually given out according to statistics is $70,000 a year uh, for happiness, and then happiness levels off. But basically, the, the true number is the fact that when you are able to pay for all your bills, when you're able to pay for all your stuff, when you're able to take yourself out to dinner, when you hit the threshold, which depending upon the city you live in is a different number, to be comfortable in San Francisco, it's like $200,000. To be comfortable in New York, it's like a quarter million. But when you hit the number where you are, like I said, it's financially secure, making more money doesn't increase your happiness. It doesn't make you more ecstatic. There's no, there is no amplification of joy at all. Yeah, and some of you, the reason being is once you can afford once you can afford most things, and once your needs are met, once your comfort's met, what else is there to do? And you see this with sometimes the uh, the super rich crowd, which I know nobody listening to this is in the super rich crowd, but I've, I've, having worked with them, I've seen this many times over the years, where you have people where they are extremely wealthy. They can afford anything they want. They can fly in a private jet. They can stay anywhere. Uh, so their life is great that way. They have no worries at all in that regard but they're still not happy. They're still not happy. Because what you realize once you get prosperous is that the things that make you happy when you're poor are the same things that make you happy when you're rich. Having good friends, having good conversations, having somebody that loves you, having experiences where you feel connected with somebody and you get to see something new, it doesn't change. And money only gets you so many things. Does money make you happy? It can to a certain extent. But like all things, it levels off. It levels off, and then you realize that whether you make a million dollars a year, or whether you make five million dollars a year, or whether you make a hundred million dollars a year, you know, whether you're worth a billion, whether you're worth a hundred thousand, whether you're just getting by each month, your happiness metric, that internal, uh, that internal, subjectively objective sensibility that your life is good, it keeps. How should I say? It keeps elevating itself to a point as you do more. But once you make a certain amount, it elevates itself no more, and then you get bored. You get bored. And that happens with people that are very wealthy. That's why they turn to drugs. That's why they turn to hedonistic purchases. That's why they turn to, they, they turn to crazy shit, because they're just looking to feel something. They're looking to feel something. Now, what does this mean for you guys? What does this mean for anybody if they're starting off from the level of zero? You know, before you ever make any money, before you ever have any prosperity, what does this mean for you? It means you have to have a clear sense of self and a clear sense of priority as to what really matters. And as I always, as I clichedly, as I often, I always point out cliches, I use cliches. But you know, as I point out with this a lot, is that if you are going to do something and you have a vision for yourself, it has to be grounded in some sense of purpose. And you have to recognize that you might be making $100 a day, you might be making $10,000 a day. Once you have that, you're not going to feel any differently about it. There's not going to be any change. And you can make all the money in the world. You can have all the money in the world. It doesn't replace a friend. It doesn't replace having a good meal. It doesn't replace you know, having a significant other. It doesn't re replace having someone that loves you. It doesn't replace the experience of kids. 
It doesn't replace. It doesn't replace any of these things. It doesn't, it doesn't replace going on adventures. Some of the, some of the best memories of my of my life came when I was at my most broke, and about all I could afford was to t drive with a tank of gas and go somewhere I hadn't seen before, and just explore. And those are beautiful memories. Those memories would not be made any better had I had money. They wouldn't. Money gets you certain things, but it certainly is not everything. Now, if you start off with the motivation now, I mean, if you're starting from zero, if you start off with the motivation where at the core it's about making a certain dollar threshold, it's about the luxury, it's about the status, you want to have the status of being able to afford things, okay, that can be your motivation, but that gets hollow real fucking fast. That gets very, very, very hollow. It's a very powerful motivation, it's a very powerful internal drive, but it's superficial. It's superficial and fleeting and ephemeral, and past a certain point, once you scratch the itch, once you satisfy it, you get nothing back from it. It doesn't give you anything you haven't had before. So if you're gonna sit, if you're gonna set out to be successful, if you're gonna set out to make something of yourself, you have to do so from a concrete basis that has some depth to it. Yeah, I point that, I point this out before. I've written this in email. Maybe some of you guys have read some, some of you have not. But when I decided that, you know what, I'm going to go into business for myself. What is that that you cook your beef? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. When I decide that I'm going to go into business for myself, when I decide I'm going to hit my personal level of prosperity, it wasn't because I wanted to have money to buy shit. It wasn't because I wanted to, I don't know, you know be able to afford a fucking uh, you know, Lamborghini and post it to the gram. It wasn't because I wanted to take international trips and you know show off that I'm, I'm staying five stars somewhere. I didn't care about any of that shit. I did that. I want prosperity because I be, want to be able to have a wife and a family and have a level of lifestyle where I could do the best by my, where I could do the best for my children, where I could do the best for my offspring, where I could craft a legacy. It was about something where I wanted to leave behind the best pieces of myself. How do you define stat? How do I define stat seeking? Is not how I define stat seeking. Is obvious. Status seeking is obvious. Anytime, if, anytime you, any inclination you've ever seen of a person where you see someone showing off their car, where you see someone bragging about the labels that they wear, where you see someone, they, they want to tell you how much money they make. And I mean, I could say I'm hypocritical, but I'm trying to share these with you, I'm trying to share myself with you for these lessons. You see people constantly telling you about how much money they make. You see people where, you know, their self esteem, you could, if you want to use that word, is predicated upon what they can't afford and what they can purchase. There's a lot of ways people seek status. Education is status. Job tiles are status. Having to show up in society a certain way is status. You know, working on Wall Street and having to wear a $20,000, $50,000 watch is status. Talking about custom suits is status. And that's not to say those things are completely stupid. Those things might be worthwhile to you. But very often, quite often, that is what people live for. Name, yeah, name dropping is status. Name dropping is status. I have a lot of people that I'm connected with who are friends of mine who are up there, high-level, powerful people. I don't, I don't talk about them. Most of the, the best parts of my life, I don't share those things because it's not important. That's what I'm trying to show off. Hey, I, I went to so-and-so's private event, and I met so-and-so and so-and-so, and so-and-so, -and -so, you know, I, I have his phone number, and we talk to each other. Yep, that doesn't matter. That, do, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Status is like fame. Status is like fame. Wealth, in a way, is like fame. You just gotta have it. You want the accolation. You want the glamour. You want the recognition from people. You want people to know your name. I'm insecure due to looks, so do I seek money and material things to offset the insecurity? If you're insecure about your looks, then you need to unfuck yourself. You need to go to the gym and work out. You need to go get a tan. You need to learn how to dress. You need to learn how to speak. You need to beautify yourself as much as you possibly can. Not for the sake of vanity. Not for the sake of vanity. You know, people always like to criticize this thing. It's about vanity. No, it's not. It's about being the best version of yourself. It's about being the best and most effective and most optimized and most powerful version of yourself that you can be. And that is all things. A man can be many things. You know, this is something that a lot of times the uh, you know, techies I know don't get. Because they're very intellectual, they're incredibly brilliant, but they're nerds. And they will like to rationalize away their lack of style, their lack of confidence, their shitty, soy, sad sack bodies. They rationalize it away because, well, I'm so smart. And I, 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 I build companies. 
You know, I have, I, I'm an idea guy. You know, I can fucking, I can make, I literally make money because I build networks. But you know what? Those guys, if you see them with their shirts off, they look like sacks of shit. And they have no confidence in their repellent women. And all they have is their money. All they have is their intellect. They are not completely developed men. A man should be a king. A man should be a warrior. A man should be a magician. A man should know how to love. A man should be many things. You should not just be one thing. So it's not de about developing yourself for the sake of vanity. It's about developing yourself as a man. They play to their strengths? Well, everybody should play to their strengths. You know, you're not going to be strong at everything, but it doesn't mean you have to be weak at it. You include the way you speak. How do you work up? You speak. You talk to people. You get in front of them. You do what I'm doing right now. How else do you work on something? You practice it. Everything can be trained. Everything can be trained. There is no aspect of you that cannot be improved upon. Truth? Absolutely. <laughs> Any other comments, guys? About to head inside. All right, people. Good talk. Love you all. Talk to you all again.